Well, we await official confirmation of this, but our understanding is that England's tour of South Africa is set to be cancelled. Now, you might be... We're still waiting on confirmation of this, hence I've got my phone in my hand, but you might remember we were waiting on test results that we were anticipating to come back tomorrow morning. It seems, for whatever reason, things have accelerated and it looks like the tour is off. When you heard that, what do you think? Well, if that's the case, it's obviously a massive, massive shame. You think of the amount of money, <coughs> effort, time to put up that secure bubble at, well, it doesn't seem quite so secure now, but at the Vineyard Hotel, everything that must have been put in place to try and get a tour like this on in COVID times, and the players hanging around waiting to play, everyone at home waiting, everyone here in South African cricket waiting, the money that they're going to lose through broadcast rights. If that is the case, it's a huge shame. But as the ECB have always said, is they will put the uh, well-being and the health of their players um, at the forefront and they will not risk that. And if the bubble has been breached, they will not risk a single player's health or more importantly, taking that home to England and risking other people's health. So if that is the case and we will find out, it's probably the right thing. Well, the chief medical officer the other day said that the bubble had been breached, hence they couldn't understand how those cases of COVID had arise, arisen in the um, Vineyard Hotel. So the players must have just lost confidence in it? I think absolutely that is the case. They've lost confidence in, in the security of the arrangements and the protocols designed to, to keep uh, the hotel virus free. I, I'm sure they become increasingly concerned. The chief medical officer, South Africa's chief medical officer, was fairly upfront, wasn't he, when he said, A, we don't understand how the bubble has been breached, and B, England are concerned and right to be concerned. The only thing is we were, were waiting for these uh, COVID results, the two unconfirmed positive cases. Now, if they come back negative, people will think that England have slightly jumped the gun. Um, but it's clearly the players are pushing this um, and they've lost confidence you know, in the ability of South Africa to keep, keep that area at the vineyard COVID free. I guess, sorry, Woody, I guess no. if they do come back negative, those tests, we've not heard anything about those tests at all. If they do come back negative, the players and the ECB might think, well, let's get out while everyone is safe and no one has got COVID, as opposed to hang around two or three days and risk one person picking it up. And then if someone picks it up and is tested positive, they have to stay 10 days or others have to take it home. So, you know, that's maybe the reason why they're doing it that way. Well, just the official statement still to come through, but we have confirmation that the tour is off, so it is not going to happen. I mean, that, that's exactly right. If, if uh, those two players, if the tests come back positive, then they have to remain behind. But not just that, then you have a frantic kind of search to determine who was in their, mm. who was in their vicinity, which I think is defined as within two metres for 15 minutes indoors and in a bubble in a team environment. You'd think that would include quite a lot of players. So that was always the fear that then these players who have got a short window uh, of bubble free life if you want to put it like that given that Sri Lanka's coming, India's coming, IPL's coming um, that that then would be curtailed because they'd have to stay here for an there extra time. There must have been time. some quite interesting conversations between ECB and Cricket South Africa. I mean if these tests come back negative tomorrow whenever they're supposed to come back and they're given a clean bill of health fulfil the fixtures that we're trying to get. I mean obviously one's gone down but fulfil the last two. And, and that's the, the ramifications there um, you know, you have to kind of throw things forward. We hope that the vaccine gets life back to normal from Easter. But if it doesn't, and England have to go through this situation again next summer of creating um, biosecure environments for their cricketers, um, they won't want the precedent set where it's it's kind of straightforward for players not to fulfil the fixtures. So. There are all kinds of, you know, we have to wait and see what the statement says. There's already a story on Crick Info about net situation at, at uh, Newlands and you can imagine things getting very messy um, as we come out of this situation. England lavish praise on West Indies, Australia, Pakistan, Ireland for coming over in the midst of that pandemic and fulfilling those fixtures which saved the ECB hundreds of millions of pounds. Um, could there be a bit of a backlash from other boards regarding this decision to call the tour off? Uh, well, everyone will start looking at their COVID protocols, their biosecure protocols. Um, it's a bit of give and take, really, because if you make it so stringent, as it was in the summer in, in England with the uh, Aegeus Bowl and Old Trafford, 
then you start getting concerned about the mental well-being and health of the cricketers. They're on top of them all the time, and a few of them really struggled with that. So what they've done out here is that they have been a little bit more accommodating to say to players, you can go out, although you will make sure that you travel with people that are in the bubble, you can go out and play golf, come straight back, and you're not compromising anything. So what they've tried to do, <coughs> excuse me, is to look after their players' mental well-being and that may have backfired a little bit. So you're always getting that balance between making a bubble so stringent that COVID cannot get in or should not get in, but then the players saying, whoa, I don't know if I can do this for much longer. We've already had Tom Curran and Banton pull out of the big bash. So, you know, there are a lot of issues. There is a little part of me that says, you know what? Those other countries did it for us. Mm -hmm. Those other countries did it. You know, Pakistan came over when we were at the height of our risk of uh, COVID infections. And there's a little bit of me saying we should have probably done that for CSA as well, because they'll be hit hard uh, by this setback. Do you, do you agree with that premise? I'd w I would like to wait and see what the COVID test results are, these two unconfirmed tests. And we always felt today was gonna be a waiting day to wait for the, A, the verification of those two tests that were sent away. And then the players were tested again. Mm. Um, so I myself would like to wait and see what those tests uh, say. If, if they were positive, and we'll find out in due course, I, I find it very difficult to see how the tour could go on. And I said that right from the outset, because you then got this situation where you're leaving players behind, other players may have to stay. Uh, but if those tests are negative, then that's a wholly different yeah. situation. And, and then you feel that there's more of a chance that the games could have and should have gone ahead. Well, we will wait and read that official statement when it comes out. But England's tour of South Africa is off.